Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Dylan Talk Sports. My name is Dylan. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reacting to the Ohio State versus Notre Dame game that took place when Ohio State defeated Notre Dame 17 to 14. If you cannot tell by my voice, it's a little sore, uh, screaming a lot during that game, pissed off. If you saw the ending, you understand why. But as an Ohio State fan, I'm going to give my full breakdown of the entire game, my feelings throughout the entire course of the game. What, what the fuck was going on in that fourth quarter? What the hell was that last drive, the game winning drive? And Ohio State, are they actually tough? We're going to get into this. I'm also going to show some highlights of that last uh, drive to get, to go down and try to win the game. We're going to kind of break it down on everything that kind of took place. But we're going to get right into this. So if you're going to enjoy, as always, make sure you do drop a like. And without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with the first thing that we're going to talk about in every single one of these videos with Ohio State. The defense looks great. The problem is, and even the commentators, they pointed this out, they are a bend but don't break type of defense. Meaning they're going to give up like every here and there, five yards, maybe six yards, ten yards. They're going to give up some little plays here and there. But hopefully by the time they get down to the 40, the 30, they're going to shut you down. And that seems like what they were doing. Earlier on in the game, Notre Dame was driving down the field, felt like they had no problem getting down the field. They got down there. They got to fourth and one. Sam Hartman, the quarterback for Notre Dame, did a little rollout. He almost got sacked in the backfield. He tried to get the first down, but he made the mistake of keeping the ball in the opposite hand rather than reaching it out. I realized why he didn't do that because you don't want to fumble the ball, but it helped out in Ohio State's favor so they weren't able to get the first down. Staying with the defense later on in the game, whenever Ohio State turned the ball over at fourth and one, Ohio State's defense had the ball. Everybody in their mama was probably thinking, there's the game, it's over, forget this, it's over, turn the TV off, screw it, I'm walking away. That's kind of where I was at because in that moment, I was hot. I mean, I was hot because then watching the game, First play, first down on a pass for about 10 or 12 yards. Next play, a run for about like 10 to 15 yards. You got to be watching that and you're just looking at the clock down below three minutes and you're just like, what the fuck is wrong with this team? But then it was like, just as we all were looking at the clock and thinking, we're screwed. Notre Dame just said, fuck it, we'll give you the win. I'm not going to pronounce the name, but JTT for Ohio State. He came up with a big time tackle for loss or sack, whatever it was. Notre Dame tries to go for the screen. They fail. Almost gets picked off by JTT. I, I swear, if he would have just picked six that thing, that would have been much more better for my heart. And then Notre Dame was obviously just trying to keep their clock running or make Ohio State burn another timeout. So they just went and ran the ball. Clock went down. Ohio State chose not to use a timeout. Ohio State was able to get the ball back. Overall, throughout the whole course of the game, the defense played great. That first half, they played great. Allowed zero points, obviously. The second half, it seemed like they were... Notre Dame made some adjustments. They started running the ball. And that's Ohio State's big problem. It seemed like in the second half, Notre Dame wasn't really airing the ball a lot more they were just saying okay we're just going to stick to what we can kind of do and that's run the ball and most of the time i believe they were just running it up the gut and ohio state could not stop them running it straight up the gut and counter runs to where like they maybe were trying to actually seal the center but they would just go right up around them and they would big gashes 10 15 yard runs the last two years that's the big thing ohio state said they were trying to work on to shut down stop the big run stop letting our defense just get taken out by big time run plays clearly it ain't fixed overall the defense did step up in a big way to end the game though now let's move on to the offense oh boy we're gonna be here for a while the offense played good i'll say that they played good Trayvon henderson he showed out marvin harrison fuck that's scary for me we're getting flashbacks of last year with jackson smith and jigba it seems like he rolled his ankle ryan day said at the end of the game he thinks it's a sprain We'll see how this kind of goes. There is a bye week coming up, so they have at least like he's got two weeks now to do some rehab, some treatment, get that ankle better. But it seemed like uh, Notre Dame, they were bracketing Marvin Harrison Jr. the entire game. They were not letting him get open. He only got three catches for about 22 yards, I believe. So they were shutting him down. And for anybody that has never played football before or understands football, when you're double teaming somebody, somebody's one on one and you just got to find that guy. And the guy who was one on one most of the time, Emeka Abuka. Abuka had seven carry or seven catches for 96 yards. He did great. Could have had a touchdown. That one fucking sucked. Could have been a touchdown, like I said. He had the ball, and then it's like he went down to the ground. I was kind of pissed off at him for a second because he got up all cheering. Like, he was excited that he got the touchdown. But it's like, when you watch the replay, it clearly hit the ground and bounced back up into his arms. Like, dude, you're on national TV. Don't celebrate if you didn't actually catch it. But overall, he had a great game. Looking at the stats here, Cade Stover had a great game. Seven catches, 52 yards. Xavier Johnson had one really good catch uh, for 40 yards. Made a big play. Julian Fleming made, I would say, probably one of the more underrated catches of the game. I'll show it here in the highlights here in just a minute. But it was a nice little fourth and seven just coming underneath. Made the catch. Reached out for the first down. If he didn't get that ball, 
the late game like highlights and all the crazy shit that ha goes on to happen in the next 40 seconds it would have been for nothing overall looking at the stats Kyle McCord went 21 to 37 240 yards I'm gonna say now before we get into the highlights he's showing improvement he is showing that he can stand in there and he can lead this team because that was the big question coming into this game can he lead this team when things are going south everything is against us backs against the wall what are you made of and he showed the entire world he is him i mean it doesn't get any more intense than a minute 30 to go down four one time out on the road you got 65 yards to go go be great it wasn't the prettiest of drive but he put together a drive so this right here is kind of where the drive basically kicks off this is like where the moment of what is kyle mccord made of the first 20 25 yards whatever this is where it gets intense fourth and seven you can see right here or by the 39 yard line notre dame they're trying to disguise their coverage for kyle mccord because obviously kyle mccord is new he doesn't really understand it you got kate stover up here you got marvin harrison down there you got julian fleming and mecca Buka up here at the top of the screen along with kate stover you're kind of asking yourself is this just going to be like a one-on-one -on -one go ball to marvin harrison can't really be that because they're double bracketing what do they do kyle recognizes it as i think he audibled but like they just get julian fleming coming right underneath and you can see right there he just has to reach out for that ball if he doesn't reach out and get that first down like i said everything else after this we would have never seen it there would have been no moment for kyle mccord next play you can see right here we got second and 10 about the 32 yard line and mecca book is kind of coming up here but marvin harrison is down here at the bottom of the screen along with him this was a beautiful throw beautiful throw marvin harrison coming across the backside safety back behind the corner safety's coming down to collapse kyle had to put this ball in a tight window i mean you watch where the ball goes like that ball had to be fed you got one two three four five defenders all around obviously that defender is going to go with the uh, mecca buka but that ball had to be stuck right in there marvin harrison i thought the ball he dropped it he made the catch obviously because marvin harrison jr he's going to catch everything now i know everybody in the world that was watching this game probably thought this is where the game's going to end right here in this play second and ten I'll let it kind of play out. Nobody really gets open. Almost a face mask there. I'm pretty sure could have been a face mask. He throws the ball away. Was his intentional grounding? I'll let it slide. It could have been. It was probably intentional grounding. Because he throws the ball away. Obviously, they show he wasn't out of the tackle box. Marvin Harrison is kind of in the city. But like the rules guys stated, if Harrison kind of just went to the back of the end zone, it could have been just, hey, he's trying to throw the ball to him. He didn't get enough mustard on it. But the fact that Marvin Harrison was cutting back up inside kind of takes away the aspect of hey there was a receiver, there was a receiver there no you can't say that anymore because now it's just you're just trying to throw the ball away to avoid a sack now before we get into this play i want to go and point something out is no way is kyle mccord probably going to win the heisman that's probably not going to happen but in the aspect of fantasy world where we were talking about could he win a heisman could he go on this season put on some really good numbers and we look back at some of the gains he has this right here could be a heisman moment third to 19 you just had a bad play with intentional grounding. You need to step up and make a throw. First down marker is literally the three-yard line. Can you go make a throw? And damn, did he put one on. Getting that ball all the way down to the goal line, that was probably the throw of his life. Now, in second and goal, this play seems like it's like the standard play that High State likes to run down here near the goal line. CJ Shroud and Marvin Harrison, they were able to do this play very, very well last year. Kyle McCord just seems like he's not really kind of gotten good at it just yet. And I say that because if you look right here, Marvin Harrison, he makes the break. Kyle already needs to have that ball coming out of his hand so Harrison can just kind of run up and grab it and easy touchdown. But instead, he's waiting. He's waiting. And also, if you notice, he kind of sails that ball. Obviously, with CJ Shroud, he would put that ball right in the chest. Kyle is kind of putting the ball away because he doesn't know if the corner is going to be able to jump the route and pick it. So obviously, moving on to the next play, third and goal, the play where... I know everybody from Ohio State fans, to Notre Dame fans, everybody was like basically just on their hands and knees begging for a miracle. And I'll let the play kind of play out as I talk about it. If you did not notice, count the players. This was kind of pointed out, and I will talk about this a little bit later in, in a moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players. Oh, 10 players right there. 10 players. You need 11 on the field. They had 10. So that did kind of screw them. And the reason why that's a big deal is right here, I think the play was originally to do be another pass play. But then when they notice 
Uh, there's no defensive line in there. There's no uh, defensive end right there. That Did you not notice where the run went? All they had to do was right here. One, two, three, four guys. One, two, three, four guys. All four of you, take them. They're not going to be able to get over there fast enough. You got one, two, three. Take them out of the equation. Look at that. It's just a big hole. If you had another defensive lineman there, they might be able to plug that hole. But instead, run out of the middle. Almost was down before we got to the goal line. And when I say I was on the edge of my seat when this touchdown happened, I didn't even cheer when it first happened because I wanted to see the replay. And it took them about like two minutes before they finally started showing the replay. Right here's the replay, obviously. But you kind of notice, and I'll go like kind of like slowly down. You see the ball was right there. You see his knees right there. It was so close. But like obviously, right there's the ball. He's in. And then for anybody out there that's saying Kyle McCord doesn't show any heart. Kyle McCord just doesn't seem like he's going to be the guy that gives his team energy. This dude's showing some energy. Look at this dude. He has heart. He wants to win. And I realize for those of you who watch my videos, you're probably going to say, hey, um, in one of your other videos about an high state reaction, you were calling Kyle McCord kind of an eh quarterback. You were calling him not that good. He doesn't show heart. I take that back. I, I take that back. And now probably the best thing that happened within the game, Ryan Day's speech afterwards. If you did not watch the pregame show, college game day, uh, Pat McAfee show, you would have seen probably the most insultful thing Ryan Day has heard for Ohio State uh, football team. Lou Holtz, the former coach for Notre Dame back in, I think, like the 80s and 90s. He also was a coach with Ohio State for Woody Hayes or under Woody Hayes. He was talking about Notre Dame versus Ohio State game. And he was saying Ohio State's weak. They don't show toughness. They have no heart. He was talking about Notre Dame, how all their players are so much better than Ohio State. Ohio State doesn't have good players. And Ryan Day took offense. And I want you to watch this post-game speech. Coach, you knew this one wasn't going to be easy, but it came down to the wire. And what can you say about the performance from your quarterback, Kyle McCord, to finish that drive? Toughness. Toughness. That's it. Physicality, cross the board, finish it off, having guts. You know, like I like to know where Lou Holtz is right now. What he said about our team, what he said about our team, I cannot believe. This is a tough team right here. We're proud to be from Ohio. And it's always been Ohio against the world. And it'll continue to be Ohio against the world. But I'll tell you what, I love those kids, and we got a tough team. What did they prove to you tonight in this victory that you'll take away and run with? Toughness. Everybody's questioning these kids all the time. We had one bad half the last couple years. That's it. Everybody wants to question these guys. These guys are warriors right here to come back and win. This kid right here to come back in the second half and win. I'm emotional about this for a reason. A lot of people question these kids and say a lot of things about them. I love them. When someone attacks your family to come in and win like this is special. It's a great win for our program and a great win for Ohio State. Now, after watching the game, let me answer a couple of the questions that I think people have asked all over social media. Number one, is this Ryan Day what we're going to get the rest of the season? God, I hope so. The Ryan Day we saw kind of throughout last season was not him. The Ryan Day we saw in the Georgia game, that was him. When he had that fourth and one stop on the jet sweep, everybody over Twitter was saying they want Ryan Day left in South Bend. Don't even bring him back to Columbus. But after that last game winning drive, everybody is saying Ryan Day is God. He is Jesus. With the rest of the team, like I said, running backs played well. Receivers played well. Marvin Harrison, we'll see how that ankle's doing. Kyle McCord, he's always just going to get better. Beginning of the year, he looked like ass. As these games kind of went on against bad teams, he looked good. Here against a really good team. He looked average. He's obviously going to just keep getting better and better and better. With the defense, they're all obviously just going to keep getting better and better and better. Like I said earlier in the video, now they have a bye week. Go in, get rehab, get treatment for everybody. You have two weeks to get ready for a Maryland team that is currently, as I uh, just checked here a minute ago, is 4-0. They are 4-0. I think they play again this week, so they'll be 5-0 with a good, a good chance to be 5-0. That's going to be a tough test. It's at home. Maryland's probably going to be ranked by then. This is going to be a tough test. That kid, Talia uh, Tungabailoa, the brother of Tua Tungabailoa in the NFL, he can sling the ball. I'm going to wrap it up with this. Can this Ohio State team keep winning games and go on to get back to the playoffs, possibly beat the team up north? They look like they can. Will they? That remains to be seen. But other than that, that's all I got to talk about for today's video. As always, with all these videos that I do post here, if you wanted to enjoy today's video, make sure you do drop a like. If you watched the entire duration of the video and you have any discussions, or any disagreements, agreements with anything I said here in today's video. Maybe you're a Notre Dame fan, a High State fan. Let me know your opinions on how you think the game went, what you thought about the game down in the comment section down below. And I'll be more than welcome to talk about it, debate it, chop it up, just talk about it, everything with you. If you are brand new to the channel and you're a fan of the content that I am posting here and you want to go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button, don't forget to hit that little notification bell to be notified the second I post. But without further ado, this has been Donald Talk Sports. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.